last but not least, concept three in our genetics unit, we are going to learn about meiosis. Now, we've already learned about mitosis. If you're in my class, we covered that in unit two cells. So you may need to go back and refresh on that. But this is a different process, and this is a really really important distinction in this process from the last one. And there's some very important vocabulary terms that we're going to go through at the beginning before we move on any further. Also, I should have mentioned this is the same notes whether you're in um, a non-honors or advanced class or you are, so it doesn't matter. We're all in this together. So, your body has two types of cells in it. First are your somatic cells. Another, These are just your body cells. That's what we refer to them as. Um, you know, the cells that are in your brain, in your skin, in your heart, in your blood, etc. These are diploid. And diploid is represented as 2N. This will mean more in a little bit, I promise. And those are some of your examples. Now, other cells you have are gametes, which are your sex cells. These are haploid, which is represented just by an N. They have half the amount of genetic information as your body cells. And these are either egg if you are a female or sperm if you are a male. And so this is really, really important. We've already learned about mitosis, which is the process of making body cells, which is happening all throughout your life as your body um, grows and repairs. But today we're going to learn how your body makes sex cells, so how it specifically makes egg cells versus sperm cells. Now, we mentioned diploid and haploid. Diploid cells, which are your body cells, have two full sets of chromosomes. So we say they are two in. One of those sets came from mom, from your biological mother, in her egg, and one of those sets came from your biological father and his sperm. So in human somatic cells, so in human body cells, the diploid number 2N is 46. So 23 from mom and 23 from dad. That's what makes up the diploid number. So all of the cells in your body have 46 chromosomes, except for your sex cells. Now, this picture is only showing a cell that has six, dip, six chromosomes or three pairs of chromosomes. So one of each of these pairs came from mom and one of each came from dad. But you can count one, two, three, four, five, six. This would be like a fruit fly. They only have six. Their diploid number is six. Okay, now this is different from a haploid cell. Haploid have half. So half of two is one. They just have one full set of chromosomes. So just in. So only one set, that's just a combination of chromosomes from mom and dad. And these are your gametes, either egg or sperm. You don't have both. And in humans, N equals 23. In this cell, this haploid cell, we can just see three. So notice it's half of that. There's only one from each of these pairs. And this is so important. We need this because remember, the purpose of that egg and sperm is going to be to go on and make a baby and they're gonna to fuse together. So an egg from the biological mother will fuse with the sperm from the biological father. And that's where you, for the first time, have all 46 of the chromosomes that make you who you are. So it's really important that they only have one set so that when they fuse, that's when you get the two sets. If your egg and sperm were diploid and had two sets, when they would fuse with another person's egg or sperm, then you'd have four sets of chromosomes, which would be way too much. Now, Within your cells, there are two types of chromosomes. Okay, so let's just look at a body. In a karyotype, man, I love karyotypes. These are diagrams that show the number and the visual appearance of the chromosomes in a cell. So this is a karyotype right here. So some of your chromosomes, the majority are autosomes. Auto means self. So these are carrying the traits that make you yourself, that make you who you are. These are the first 22 pairs of chromosomes in a human. So all of these chromosomes that are labeled 1 through 22, those are your autosomes. Then you have your 23rd pair. That's your sex chromosomes. These do carry traits that make you who you are, but mainly they're, ter they're determining your biological sex from a genetic standpoint. 
So this is the 23rd pair. If you have an X and a Y for your sex chromosomes, genetically you are classified as a male. If you have two X's, then genetically you're classified as a female. And so that's really important. So this is a karyotype. Notice if I counted each of these chromosomes, there'd be 46. So this is picturing all the chromosomes in a body cell or a somatic cell. This is diploid because there's two in each pair. If this was a picture of a karyotype in a sex cell, like an egg and sperm, we'd only have one from each of these pairs. Okay, so before we can jump in the process, we need a little bit of background. And who doesn't love to look at babies? Because I could look at babies all day. Babies can't happen without pregnancy. And pregnancy can't happen without fertilization. And fertilization can happen naturally without copulation. It can happen artificially with IVF or IUI, but we're not going to get into that in this class. But if you take my anatomy course, we will. We'll do some fascinating research on that. Now, copulation can't result in offspring without an egg and a sperm. So where do the egg and sperm come from? That's what we're going to learn about today. Okay, so here's our overview. Meiosis. This is the process of cell division that's making gametes in your gonads. So your gonads in females are ovaries. So this is happening in your ovaries if you're a female, and it's happening in your testes if you're a male. And this process is going to make haploid sex cells, eggs in females and sperm in males, that have half the number of chromosomes as your diploid body cells. Now, sexual reproduction cannot happen without meiosis. But before we talk about that, let's look at this picture. So you're getting meiosis is happening in males, and they're making sperm. In females, they're making eggs. The one sperm will fertilize an egg, um, and then that egg will go through mitosis, or that fertilized egg is now considered a zygote, which will go through mitosis and cell differentiation to form the embryo, which we learned about in Unit 2. But we got to talk about this sexual re reproduction first and the process of fertilization. So sexual reproducers, not all organisms are sexual reproducers. All it means to be a sexual reproducer um, is it's the fusing of genetic information, gametes, from two parents in order to produce offspring that are a genetic mixture of both parents. So humans are sexual reproducers. All it means is that it takes two to tango. You need an egg and you need a sperm and those have to genetically fuse together in order to make the offspring. So the offspring is always a combination of two parents. And that fusing is fertilization. That's when the egg and sperm fuse and make the zygote. So you'll have an egg and you'll have multiple sperm that will swim to try to fertilize that one egg. Majority of girls, unless you have a hyperovulation situation, are only releasing one egg a month. But millions of sperm are in semen that try to fertilize that egg one will make it, hopefully, if it happens, and then the, you'll see the mitosis is going to start happening and we'll start getting multiple cells, and then eventually they'll start to differentiate. But we're going to focus on how this egg is made and how this sperm is made today. So during sexual reproduction and during meiosis, the number of chromosomes is so critical, you all. So you're going to start with a germ cell in meiosis. So this is a cell in your ovaries if you're a female or in your testes if you're a male. And it's, it's diploid. For a human, that means it has 46 chromosomes. Now, it'll go through the S phase of interphase and we'll get duplicated chromosomes. So we'll now have two copies of all 46. That's 92 individual copies. Okay, so stay with me. Meiosis is fascinating because it happens twice. We basically do cell division twice. So first, we divide up the pairs of chromosomes. So we, after the first round of meiosis, we have haploid cells, but they're still duplicated. So now we have 46 duplicated chromosomes. Then we're going to do meiosis again, and we're going to split up those duplicated chromosomes, and then we'll end up, excuse me, we'll have 23 duplicated chromosomes, so we'll end up with 23 unduplicated chromosomes. So we'll end up with four cells that have half the original number. It's really important. We'll get into it and I think it'll make more sense. Okay, one more set of terms I need to remind you of before we get any further. Homologous chromosomes and sister chromatids. I like to refer to these as homochromos. These are your chromosome pairs that have the same types of genes because one came from mom and one came from dad. So that's where the homo means same. 
Locus refers to location. So it just means they have genes in the same locations on them. So, for example, this is homologous chromosome pair number six, one from mom and one from dad, and they have all the same genes located on them. And those determine together how you are, who you are. So these are homochromo pairs. This is different from sister chromatids. Sister chromatids are when they look like X's, and it's two identical copies of the same exact chromosome. And this is what is result of S phase or DNA replication. So remember, the purpose of meiosis is it's a process of creating gametes, sex cells that have half the normal number of chromosomes, so only one set instead of two. To do this, we're going to do cell division two times. So in your notes, um, I'm about to tell you meiosis and one and meiosis two. You're going to have to skip ahead to write these down in your notes, um, and then we'll go back and hit all the individual steps. So meiosis one, the purpose, this is what we're seeing up here, is to separate the homochromo pairs. We're going to reduce from diploid duplicated chromosomes to haploid duplicated chromosomes. So look at this picture right here. We start off before interphase with one, two, three, four chromosomes or two pairs. After S phase, we still have four chromosomes and two pairs, but we have X's, so we have duplicated chromosomes. They'll go through cell division. Now at the end, I'll have two cells with only two chromosomes. Remember, I started with four. So I have half the number of chromosomes, but they're still duplicated. So then in meiosis two, I'm going to separate those sister chromatids. I'm going to separate those X's. And it's going to happen in two cells simultaneously. So we're going to take those sister chromatids and we're going to rip them apart. And notice the end result. Four cells that have half the number of chromosomes as the original cell. Go back here and let's count from the original cell. One, two, three, four. Down here, they each only have one, two. So they have half the number. That's really important. Okay, reminder. Before any type of cell division, we're in interphase or the growth phase. An interphase has three parts. G1, where the cells are growing and making proteins, S and G2. S is critical. This is synthesis. This is concept one, DNA replication. We're doubling the number of chromosomes by making a copy of our DNA. So we're going from this to sister chromatids, Xs. Then G2 is gap two. There's more cell growth and protein synthesis. So at the end of interphase, we have two copies of every chromosome. We have duplicated chromosomes, and we're ready then to get into the division part. Again, I can't emphasize how important this is. These are unduplicated homochromos. After DNA replication during the S phase of interphase, we have duplicated homochromos or individual sister chromatids. Okay, then we're just going to go through PMAT twice. That's what's going to happen. All right, first is prophase one. You've got to put the one because it's going to happen twice. That's really important. Just like in mitosis, the nuclear membrane is going to dissolve. Um, centrioles will separate and um, spindle fibers will start forming out of them and homochromos are going to pair up and condense and become visible as pairs. You can refer to them as a tetrad which is a cluster of four chromatids, one, two, three, four in that, pa in that um, pair of chromosomes. Now something unique to prophase one is something called crossing over which may occur between these homochromos. During prophase one, I said they all kind of pair up together. Sometimes these chromosomes can cross over each other and get tangled. When this happens, they can swap pieces of DNA, and this creates new combinations of genes that are part mom, part dad. So here's what I like to think. Your daddy chromosome and your mommy chromosome, they are snuggling, and there just gets a little hanky-panky. There gets to be a little exchange of info here, and now we end up with chromosomes that are recombinant chromosomes. That's what cro crossing over is. This is where you can get some really interesting new genetic combinations from your parents. Okay, after that we get a metaphase. Metaphase still think middle. Metaphase one, here's the difference. Your homochromo pairs line up in the middle of the cell but in pairs. So they're not single file, they're lining up in pairs. Because remember the whole point of this process is to break up the pairs. Anaphase one, bye bye mommy and daddy chromosomes. The homochromosome pairs separate. They're no longer pairs. One chromosome from each pair is pulled to either side. The sister chromatids, though, are still attached. Then we have telophase one and cytokinesis. The chromosomes gather at either end. The nuclear membranes may or may not reform. And then cytokinesis, the cytoplasm splits into two cells. 
So we're ending with two haploid daughter cells. because There's only two chromosomes here. They're just duplicated. Now we're going to go through it all over again in meiosis 2. But notice there's two cells that this is being pictured in because it's happening in the two cells that resulted from meiosis 1. So the nuclear membrane, if it did reform, it'll break down again. Spindle fibers are forming and attaching to the centromeres. Remember the center of the sister chromatids. We're going to pull those sister chromatids single file to line up middle of the cell. And then we're going to rip apart the sister chromatids. They'll never be together again and pull them to either end of the cell. And then our nuclear membranes will reform in telophase 2. Spindle fibers will dissolve, and then cytokinesis happens again. We're going to split the cytoplasm into two cells, so we end up with four. And our end result is four haploid daughter cells that are genetically unique from each other that have unduplicated chromosomes. So I think it's really helpful to look at mitosis, which we learned about in unit two, and meiosis side by side. So I always remember mitosis makes my toes, it makes my body cells. Meiosis or meiosis makes me. It's how I was made from an egg and a sperm. So let's go through mitosis first. What? We're creating diploid somatic cells or diploid body cells. When? All the time. In the womb and throughout your entire life you'll be doing mitosis. Where? All over your body. Why? For growth and for repair. How? We're going to go through PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis one time. And the result is going to be two identical diploid somatic cells that are they're identical to each other and to the parent cell. And this is considered asexual reproduction. You do this process all by yourself. It doesn't take anyone else to do it. Now, meiosis is different. We're going to make haploid sex cells. Now, when this happens, it's pretty interesting. In females, meiosis actually happens before you're born. You're born with all the eggs that you'll ever have. And I'm not going to get into oogenesis and spermatogenesis with y'all. It's a little bit more complicated. But for our and purposes, just know that it's happening before you're born with female. You have a, fin a finite number of eggs. In males, from puberty onward, you'll be making sperm. You'll literally, you can make sperm until you die. It's kind of crazy. So that's when meiosis is happening in males. Where? In females, it's happening in the ovaries, and in males, it's happening in the testes. Why? The ultimate purpose of this is to make babies. We need to make cells with half the number of chromosomes so that then during sexual reproduction and fertilization, a baby can be made with the right number of chromosomes. How do we do this? We do PMAT two times. And the result is four unique haploid gametes. And then again, this is a sexual reproduction process. Even though I make my eggs by myself and males make sperm by themselves, to get the end result that we're going for, which is a baby, it is a sexual process because it does take two to make the baby. And that is meiosis.